so yeah, this can just be an introduction to Claire's Connect, um, and then we'll kind of go. Oh, we'll do a demo and go over kind of more of an advanced example. So. Uh, Claris Connect is a cloud-based integration platform that allows you to automate workflows uh, by stitching applications together quickly without having to write complex integrations. Um, with Claris Connect, simplicity and power are at your fing fingertips to enable new digital experiences, connecting both on-premise and cloud-based apps and services. Integration, integrating best-of-breed apps and services can be done in minutes, not days with Claris Connect. So, IPAAS or Integration Platform as a Service, like, like Claire's Connect, gaining momentum in the marketplace. The demand for the technology is accelerating. For clarification, let's pause and briefly review what an Integration Platform as a Service is and how it works. Um, so an IPAAS um, allows for seamless connections of cloud-based or premise apps, on-premise and services. As you can see in this graphic, they act as a hub of integration between apps, making integration more accessible by removing the need for more complex or custom integrations. Uh, integration platform as a service software offers many benefits such as enabling businesses agility to deliver digital solutions faster, accelerating time to market, emphasizes updates over upgrades. Claris Connect will offer automatic, reliable and regular updates that lower the maintenance costs enhance reliability and promise the use of the latest and greatest capabilities. Its low code nature reduces dependency on IT resources. It empowers developers to boost productivity and improve business outcomes. It increases unified customer experience by automating the integration of scattered applications and produces better business insights by capturing data across applications more effectively. Claris Connect is built on the concept of flows to automate business tasks and processes. Uh, flow is a sequence of steps triggered by an event. Flows are automations that connect two or more components. A component can be a Claris Connect utility or a connector to a third-party application. Uh, the initial steps to, in any flow is a trigger. A trigger in Claris Connect is basically an event which a flow will be waiting or listening for. Each time that a trigger event occurs, Claris Connect reacts and automatically performs the subsequent steps in the flow. Actions carry out uh, an operation in, target app, in the targeted app, usually a create, update, or search operation. Each action requires a set of input fields and typically returns data that can be used in subsequent steps. Step data is the output data from a trigger or an action step. Uh, these are variables that you can use in mapping your business logic into flow steps. And then connectors represent the software that integrates workflows and shared data between apps or data sources. Connectors can have triggers and or actions, but not all connectors have triggers and actions. Um, so yeah, that was just a brief intro. Now we're gonna get into the demo. Uh, today we'll be integrating with a form stack form that lets you donate to a charity. We'll then get the user's profile pic using Gravatar, just because we can. Uh, and then we'll convert the donated amount into US dollars. We'll then send all that info to FileMaker so that we have a record of it. And then uh, we'll just Slack our team, letting them know who just donated. So normally that'd be pretty complex. Um, it definitely makes it a little easier with uh, Claris Connect. So we'll just jump right in. I'm actually gonna change my screen here. Just a second. All right, so this is Claris Connect. It's just a connect.claris.com. And um, how it's set up is you have projects and then inside a project. So we'll go ahead and create a new one called IFDG. And within there, you have flows. And those are, think of those as your workflows. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just create a new flow. We'll just call this donation form. Actually, we'll call this new donation. So these are all the different apps um, at launch that have that you can integrate with Claris Connect. Um, you'll notice that some of them are grayed out. Um, this means right now we're trying to we're trying to configure our trigger, and anything that's grayed out means it doesn't have a trigger. So uh, Dropbox has no triggers, but uh, MailChimp does. On MailChimp, I can, you know, on a new subscriber, 
if someone unsubscribes, etc. Those are my different actions I can take. Uh, for this one, we're going to be integrating with form stack. So I'm just going to grab that. And I've already created the form in form stack. We're uh, donating to the Society for the Resolution of First World Problems. <laughs> so, About time. <laughs> right? Um, so the new form, the only trigger action that we have is on a new form submission. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And then we can just connect a new account. So I'm already logged in. So it just brings us up and I can just authorize that. And then we'll hit continue. And then now I can select the form. So um, I had a couple of forms here when I was testing, but we're gonna do this donations form. And it won't let you hit save until you submit some data. So um, I've gone ahead and filled this out already. So I'm gonna hit donate now. And the connection is now complete. So we can save that. And the reason it makes you do that before you continue is because um, first of all, it's testing it, make sure it works. And then second of all, um, it needs that data for all the future steps. So um, first thing that we're gonna do is, uh, well, we're just gonna grab the user's profile picture. So um, this, is just, this is actually not something that is um, an action that is, you know, there is no Gravatar uh, integration, but uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with this, but Gravatar basically you take an email address and if you hash it, you can use this URL and it'll grab their profile pic. So if they've set it up. So it's kind of a um, show that you can definitely integrate with things outside of uh, just what's already there. So, and they give some examples on how to do it. And they say, you're supposed to, you know, trim the email, lowercase it, and then MD5 hash it. So um, luckily that's all pretty easy in Claris Connect. So we have all these utilities. These are kind of built-in utilities um, that kind of let you transform the data that you're getting back. So we're gonna go ahead and use this text utility and we're going to trim white space. So, you know, that's pretty easy. So from here, um, they have this button here. This lets us access step data from the steps before. So I'm gonna click that. And the only step we've already done is this form stack one, so I can open that. And this is all of my data that I submitted for my form. So we're gonna grab the email address and we're gonna trim it. Um, but you kinda need to test along the way because you can't, the next step won't have the trim data unless we review and test it. So I'm gonna test my action. And there we go, so trimmed it, if there was any spaces in it. So now I just click this plus button here and we're gonna add another action. So now we need to lowercase it. So again, pretty easy text utility, lowercase. And this time from our step data, there will be two. There will be the form and the trim that we did before. So we wanna take the trim data and then we wanna lowercase it. So we did that. And again, we're gonna to wanna to test this as we go. So we can click test and then test the action. And that lowercase it just fine. All right, and then up next, we need to hash it. So there is a whole section for cryptography utilities. So uh, we can go in here and we can hash it. And we're gonna grab our email from our lowercase thing right here. And we're gonna MD5 hash it and we wanna hex encode. And again, we'll wanna test that. All right, so yeah, that I mean, that's fairly easy for most people, I think, to kind of just start stringing stuff together. And that's kind of the, the power of this. Um, up next, we wanna obviously take the hash and add it to the rest of this URL. So I'm gonna copy that. Oops. And you'll notice that we haven't really used any variables because you can always pick from the steps before. Um, but this time we are gonna use a variable just to have a place to kind of store this data. 
So um, we're going to create a new variable. And we'll just call this Gravatar URL. And we're going to combine. So you just paste in the text that you want. And then we can grab in that hash variable from our hash step. And I want to give it a little bit bigger size. So uh, I just know that there's a flag you can give to make it a little bit bigger size. All right. And again, I just, as I go, I find it's best to just test as you go. Um, Cause you need, you basically need each um, variable from the step before. All right. And just to test that, we're going to grab that and throw it in the tab. Boom. So that is working well. Um, all right. So now we've kind of got the form. We've got that. Um, now we can take the currency rate. So I, I think I said uh, $58 Canadian. So um, we want to always send that to our system, let's just say in uh, US dollars. So there's a, again, there's no API or anything built into Claris for you know exchange rates or anything, but um, that doesn't mean we can't kind of extend it to do other things. There's this webhook thing here that lets you do HTTP get, post, patch, put, um, all these different actions that you can do. So you can actually integrate with um, services that are not necessarily set up for Claris yet. So. Um, I'm going to be integrating with uh, this free API. Um, it's, it's a really nice API because it requires uh, zero authentication, which makes it really easy for <laughs> demo purposes. And uh, this is the call that we're going to want to do. And if you just go there, it just gives us a JSON object with all the current rates um, of the different currencies. And I set the base as US dollars. So. US is always going to be one, and these are all um, based off of that. So that makes it really easy. We can just do a git command here. So we're going to git, we'll type in that URL. Um, you can, I'm going to just leave all of these how they were. That all looks good. You can actually do um, some basic authentication as well. Um, but again, this one does not require it. So we'll save that. And we'll review and test. Perfect. Brought those rates in. Um, so one of the reasons I wanted to kind of bring bring this in is to maybe show you one of the potential pitfalls you might find when you're doing this. Um, if you were, you know, most FileMaker devs would think, yeah, I can just parse that out. You know, I'll just uh, set a variable to the the correct uh, exchange rate. So you would come in here and say, well, let's make a new variable called exchange rate. And you would want to pull from our webhook. So you're like, oh yeah, well, if it's uh, Canadian, I'd want the Canadian price. If it's, you know, uh, pounds, I'd want to pull this. But the problem is, is in FileMaker, you might go, okay, I want the rates. And then you might try to do like dot notation, dot, and then um, the the selected currency, so Canadian dollars. But the problem is, is that this does not work. Um, at least it hasn't in my <laughs> previous tests. It'll probably work now just to mess with things. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, so when you click that, it just says no dice. Um, it doesn't actually actually doesn't give you any feedback, but it kind of kind of freezes it up. Honestly, it kind of breaks it, so it's best to just reload after that. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna reload real quick. Oh no! Can you comment on why it broke? No, there we go. That scared me. It didn't, didn't show my stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure it needs a static uh, path. Like, um, yeah. I just don't think it's supported, Stephen. I just think it's uh, 
not built in yet. So what you have to do mm -hmm. is you have to do if fails statements for each one you want to do. So um, I I kind of did that fast. So, so I went up to here and I click this if then. Um, and then we can do if the um, currency rate, or sorry, if the currency is, and there's a whole bunch in here, equal to case sensitive or insensitive, contains, begins with, all sorts of stuff in here. Um, but we're going to do equal to case insensitive um, to Canadian dollars. And we'll save that. So if that, then we want to do an action. And we want to set a variable to the exchange rate for Canadian dollars. So it's a little more cumbersome to do certain things like that at the moment. Um, I believe they'll probably add some things that'll make that better. But for right now, you kind of have to do um, a little bit of uh, more work. So. And you can add on when you click uh, the if statements, the if else statements, a little frustrating. It takes a little bit to get used to. But um, if I want to add, because there's no if else is really, you can only have if statements. So if I want to add an if statement after this, so check if this or if this or if this, um, I would go if then, and then I would add, it says when the condition is false. But it's not really an else because it'll run regardless. So it's kind of confusing. But um, yeah, we'll just keep going. <laughs> that, that was FileMaker 7, the, the else statement I, or else if, right? Wasn't that 7, I think? Used to not have else if. That was before my time, Kevin. <laughs> But uh, I think that's I think that's what I've heard. That would explain some of the coding I've run across in old systems. <laughs> How's the uh, documentation? Does it not the documentation for doing this, but does it self-document? Can you? Does it have a nice diagram that allows you to visualize the workflow? Um, there's not a ton of documentation out there yet, um, but. Uh, it, you know, this is kind of what you get. It kind of shows you the workflows you're going. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. It, it kind of guides you a little bit, but there's definitely some things that you kind of just have to do some trial and error. Mm -hmm. I think when I you, uh, Mason, when you broke it earlier, <clears throat> is there any kind of, since there was no feedback, there was no response, is there any kind of log or someplace under the hood that you can kind of, as a developer, go, what just happened? Um, to see the actual the, data. The being only place changed. that I've really seen is if you go into inspect, really pull up your okay. log and go to <laughs> network <laughs> and watch your network. Oh uh, man, your console. Um, oh. Edward so. Snowden stuff here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know if this would work for your case, Mason. I've had some of those errors, and sometimes eventually they do return a response. It'll just mm. time out and come back with something at some point. But it's not usually very helpful. I could, it is possible that I'm not patient at all. That is very possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I waited a while. Um, what, 30 seconds, you. 60 seconds? What, did, what was your feeling on when you got a response? Um, Me? That, yeah. Um, I think sometimes it was at least 60 seconds, but uh -huh. usually I was only getting that kind of delay if, um, if there was an error like what Mason was showing, or if I was, I've been getting some strange timeout issues querying um, Office, Microsoft Outlook. Yeah. But then it'll work in the flow, so it's, it's kind yeah, of a puzzle. <laughs> there's there's definitely a few issues we've ran into, um, so I'm thinking they're still kind of working out some of the kinks. But um, all right, so yeah, I'm only going to set those three just because um, I don't want to do I don't want to be here all night with all the different versions. 
Um, so let's go ahead and add. So once we've got the exchange rate, we're basically just going to want to um, multiply. So some basic math. So we'll go in here. We have the calculation utility. Um, this lets you add numbers, subtract, multiply, or do your own um, expressions. So it's kind of an interesting format because they want you to comma separate the numbers that are going to be multiplied. Um, so we're going to want to take the amount, the donation amount, and then we're going to put a comma in here, and then we're going to put in, um, and you'll also notice they put the variables at the top. So um, even though I set a variable on line five, it goes to the top. So exchange rate, and we'll save that. And I was having some trouble, trouble reviewing and testing this step, but um, we'll try it. Yeah, it gives me zero, which is not correct, but, um, but it does work once it actually runs the flow. Um, all right, so we multiply. Uh, the only problem we're gonna run into is that if you actually look at this, is um, obviously the current exchange rates are gonna give us really lots and lots of digits and uh, decimal places there. So um, it's kind of a tip that I figured out. It's not really documented. Um, but in the calculation utility, if you go to the calculation expression, which just lets you type in anything, um, I found it, it, it's basically using behind the scenes. I know it's using Node, which is based on JavaScript, obviously. So um, you have access to the math function in JavaScript. So you can do functions like math.round, um, but you don't include the math part. You just do round. So um, I'm going to take the what I got from my multiply, which in this case it thinks it's zero, but it's really not. Um, and it always just rounds it to a whole number. So the trick you can do to get it to two decimal points is you times it by 100 and then divide by 100. So all right. And the calculation expression is not very explicit. So there is an option to rename. So we'll just say round. All right, so now we've kind of got all the data we need. And then um, now we're gonna send it to FileMaker. So I've got a little FileMaker database here. Um, it's a one table, one layout type deal, just has data for everything in there. So we'll go ahead and add that action. And you'll notice there's a couple different options. Um, so FileMaker Cloud is specifically for um, actual FileMaker Cloud and you log in with your FileMaker ID. Um, and that is definitely different than server 18v3. I honestly have not had a chance to really dig into server on premise, um, but when you go to connect an account, um, it wants to use an agent key and connection name. So that might be something we need to look into more because uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, but so what I've been doing is just been sticking to uh, uh, FileMaker 18. So we'll go back to that. So FileMaker server 18 v3. And these are the actions out of the box that you have, creating record, editing the uh, get record by ID, deleting record, searching and executing scripts. So we'll just create a record. We're gonna uh, connect to this real quick. Um, There's another, <laughs> I cannot add a space in my username has, I can't add a space while I'm typing, but I can go back and add a space later. So another fun little bug. Um, what, what's your sense, Mason? Is this a complete product? Is it a beta that they're selling or? Um, <laughs> the, this isn't question. the famous question of, do I look like I'm overweight in this outfit? This is, <laughs> it's just it, a it real question. It definitely feels a bit like a beta to me. Um, yeah. Once you get it set up, I think it works great, but the actual setting up part has been a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. 
All right, so once you get in there, it shows you a list of all the layout names. Um, right now, I only have submission. And uh, once I select the layout, it's going to show me all the fields um, that are on the layout. So you'll notice, though, it does not include this photo. This photo is a container. Um, it does not include that on the list. You can't um, set containers from this interface. So oh. go ahead and, yeah, it's pretty easy to set your data. You just have access to all your steps before. So I'm just going to quickly go through, grab my form stack data. Um, my photo URL, we could have it saved in a variable called gravatar URL. This comes from here. Currency. Any limits on character counts in the fields or columns? Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried anything crazy. All right, so my conversion rate saved in the variable. And then the amount in US is going to be from my rounded data, which doesn't show up yet. Um, we're going to have to submit it. This is one that kind of the test wasn't working. So we'll do, we'll send it through real quick. Um, let's go ahead and enable. So by default, everything is disabled. Um, so while you're testing it and editing it, you know, triggers won't happen, but I'll just click that to enable. And I'm just going to fill this out real quick again. So we should get a record in here in a second. There we go. It is missing the amount in US dollars. But now when I go back to my test, I should be able to go to configure, down to amount in US dollars, grab my round utility, and grab the result. Perfect. So the next time that I submit it, the amount in US dollars should come through. Uh, next, I'd, I'd kind of like to uh, grab my, my profile picture and throw it in this photo container. So what I've done is um, I've added a simple script called download attachments. Um, it just takes the record ID. So this is the internal record ID. So I've made a calculation called um, ZCN record ID. And it's just an unstored calculation that runs the custom or the the built-in function get record ID. So um, for those of you that don't know anything with like the data API, it all involves these internal IDs. So in order to search it though, on the FileMaker side, you need a field that you can search on. So I just make that calculation. So I'm entering find mode, going to the, there's only one way out, so that's really not necessary, but uh, doing the find, and then we're just doing an insert from URL. So we're just taking this URL, and inserting the contents into this container. So pretty simple. So let's go ahead and set up our action to run that script. So um, since we've already used FileMaker, it's gonna show up up here. We're gonna execute the script. Um, it saves that we're already connected to this FileMaker server account. So we can just select that and continue. So we just have to choose the layout name pulls in all the script names, so we need that script, and then our script parameter. So this, we need to pass in the record ID. So we got the record ID from the previous step. So on 15, we got a response with our record ID, and the message thing was okay. So we'll grab the record ID and save that. And then the final step that we want to do, just kind of for fun, um, is send a Slack message. So we go to Slack and we're going to post a message. We'll connect account. Um, connecting accounts again is pretty dang easy. They're all just OAuth. So you connect the account, you click allow. Continue. Uh, the channel, I've got one set up for sample Slack channel. The message, we'll just say, we'll grab their first name. So I just donated, and then we'll put in the amount that we got back from round. So dollars. And we'll go ahead, instead of the, you know, the Claire's Connect icon for what it shows in um, Slack, we're going to go ahead and use our 
gravatar URL here. And yeah, that is the entire script. So let's go ahead and test it out real quick. All right. Donate there. So we got our second record, my photo came in, and I got a Slack message saying that I just donated $82. So um, that is kind of the basics of it. I did want to dive into a couple more of the functions. First of all, though, does anyone have any questions or comments on this? I've got one small question, yeah. and maybe, maybe you touched on this already, but in that whole part where you were going through parsing the text, you were hashing it, uh, you know, doing all that, mm -hmm. there were check boxes down the side. Could you have done that all in one step? Lower case. Um, I don't it? think so. That's a good question. Um, no, no. Oh, I, I wasn't radio sure buttons. if those radio buttons or if they were right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah. yeah, Mary and I were clapping. I don't know if anyone else saw that, but that was just a, it was so easy. So you can do that in about an hour, right? If we quote that out, is that right? Uh, I could do this in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is, well, did it take an hour and ten minutes to do it the first time? You know, it honestly didn't take that long. Um, once I settled on the right, you know, the whole path. Once I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I did struggle getting, uh, at first I was trying to have people submit a resume and upload um, like to SFTP or an FCP. Um, so I was struggling with that, but mostly it's just a security issue from Formstack. So it really just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, it's just, you know, everything's new. So you're going to run into new problems and there's not a lot of people out there that have really um banged on everything very well yet so you're it's going to be harder to find answers to your any issues you have um but when you have a service that you know if you have some stuff that you actually need to work i think the value is extremely high um you know once you get it set up it works great it's just kind of getting the setup thing that uh, has been a little bit of an issue um in some cases but uh i did want to go into a couple more of these because there's some cool stuff in here um so like the approval, this approval tool um, is pretty cool because it this is what it mentioned about uh, flows not having to take place all at once. So a flow can basically pause and it'll email someone and it'll have in the email, it'll have a message and you can type, you know, is this approved or denied? So for like uh, like PTO requests or something, it can, before the flow continues, it'll get sent off to a manager um, and the manager can approve it or deny it. And if based on if it's approved, it does this or denied. So that's kind of cool. Um, dates utility has a lot of nice date formatting things, which makes it really easy to format the date um, or you know add or subtract dates pretty easily. The document utility, um, it actually has some text extraction built in, which is kind of nice. Um, you can extract from a PDF, a document, JPEG, RTF. You can convert JSON to XML or vice versa. Um, <coughs> doing anything with the what's returned from the results is a little trickier. Um, it seems to parse it okay, but uh, doesn't have a ton of ability to, I guess, uh, figure out, parse the text and certain areas it just gives you all the text from the page but uh cool nonetheless and could definitely what i think was probably the most realistic thing for this is you extract it and then send a file maker or something and then let file maker kind of do the heavy lifting of um you know figuring out because the text is on this line and this area we grab it and know what it is um Jason, you said uh you were looking at the three different FileMaker connections. You said, you know, the cloud, it said on-prem, and then you've got this one, 18v3. I'm a little confused because if I look correctly, unless sometimes I get lost, I think you were connecting to an on-prem server there, but you didn't use the on-prem button. Correct. Um, you know, let's click the info button. Maybe it'll give us more information. 
<laughs> which is uh, not okay. There we go. I got you. It's not accessible. Huh. Um, there, there's something I'm I know there's about something that. about a file maker agent, but I don't quite know why you would need it. But I, um, huh, I didn't realize it till the day when I was clicking on them and I was like, I clicked is that on only them. like if if FileMaker wants to start the initiation, like FileMaker wants to do something and then that starts a chain reaction? No, um, because if you go, let's go to flows and make a new flow. Um, FileMaker has their own trigger for FileMaker Server 18 v3, so it can be no, triggered. That, that on-prem one where it's saying it doesn't always have access to the internet is that like saying because if it doesn't always have access to the internet, how would this work? I know that's the part I couldn't. I was yeah, still I wrapping my head around. You're supposed to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be the expert. My bad. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, no, I need to do a little more digging on I mean, that. Can you click on that the, the magic button of web services without being online? Isn't that info button? Mm. Uh, the only thing I can think of is like it's building it up until it's online. I don't know. Like it's holding it all like a, you know, like, oh, I don't know. Um, um, anyway, we don't have, I don't have to distract you too much. That's because it was confusing. I wanted to be very clear. You, you were connecting to an on-premise. Uh, um, ultimately server, but there's one labeled on premise that's like different. So, yeah. And I didn't realize the difference until today when I was uh, preparing for this and I was like, well, I clicked on the wrong one and I was like, oh, so it's about an agent. Is, is, is Okay. I guess we'll have to, yeah, we'll have to kind of figure I don't out. Know, I don't know how, I think it's more curiosity. I don't know how practical it is. Yeah. I don't know either. Um, seems like this one works fine. Um, and, also, FileMaker can do triggers, by the way. Um, how it does a trigger is you basically, um, it just gives you instructions on how to write an API call. So you just have to do an insert from URL from FileMaker with uh, some JSON. So it kind of just gives you instructions on how to do that. So kind of interesting. Um, I imagine in the future, there will be a drop down that says like run run Claris connect script. Um, but for now, you just do an insert from URL. Um, let's see, is there any other? And, and going back to the utilities, I think you said, I mean, we've had some conversations about this. The one that you seems to be like a pretty unique selling proposition or a USP from connect is that approval thing, because that's a web-based middle component that they're basically providing to you for a workflow. Correct. Yeah. Which is really unique. Yeah, that one's pretty unique and it's pretty cool. Um, schedules also is kind of interesting because um, you can have these basically pause and halt your uh, scripts as well. So halt it for a number of days um, or it can be run as a trigger. Think of it as a FileMaker script, like I want it run every five minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever. So that's kind of what the uh, schedules does. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Um, I had a little bit more, unless anyone has any more questions while we're in demo land. How, how many apps? I mean, are the grade one, are, are, I guess, I guess my, what I'm trying to say is there were apps that were available before it became public and then they kind of took them away. Somehow yeah. we ended up with a video of one of them that they didn't release as our, our, our our content we published um, did that come back is Google Calendar in there or have you seen any yeah. apps disappear and come back no not yet no. Uh, none of them have come back yet so yeah before they launched and went live there was you know Google uh, Google Calendar Gmail uh, Google Drive and uh, yeah I think that was it but uh, some of those left um, I think the Salesforce stuff used to be there. I don't think that's back yet. But I think part part of the, I mean, if we're doing a little little quick AAR here or post mortem, part part of the the things that you've learned in this process uh, include, you know, you know, tell me a little bit about the DocuSign experience, right? Like you, you know, you've got to make each one of these providers work. Yeah, yeah. Once you get the the provider working, it's great. It's just 
getting it set up is definitely some are harder than others. Um, our specific account for DocuSign did not support integrations or and stuff. And um, you can just say it was old. We've had it for it was a old. long time. <laughs> yeah, it was old. Didn't work. <laughs> um, but no. I, I know Brandon's played around with the QuickBooks one. That one seems um, pretty dang robust. There's a lot, a lot you can do here. Um, I would imagine this is going to be the most battle tested one because QuickBooks yeah. is so heavily requested. And I don't know, I don't know the percentage of businesses, right? Probably 99%. I mean, it's got to be way up there. ERP land is where you stop not seeing QuickBooks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to just uh, finish this up real quick with some more kind of information about pricing and all that. Um, a second. All right, can everyone see my screen again? Yep. All right, um, so yes, here's some more of the kind of differentiators between some of the um, other software out there. So number one, uh, approvals, most integration platform is service uh, software. Just look for triggers and perform the subsequent actions. They do not have the ability to pause in the middle of a flow and allow human intervention like Claire's Connect does. Um, number two, most integration platform as a service software do not have uh, if statement capabilities or error capturing. Uh, three, there's no feature-based pricing. Everyone will have access to the entire feature set of the platform regardless of which purchase plan they choose. Uh, reaction time, uh, a lot of the other services involve wait times of up to 15 minutes. Uh, with Claris Connect, the connection happens in real time. Uh, Claris provides the best connector to FileMaker software with the ability to connect to on-prem or in the cloud. And uh, number six is something I'm excited about. Um, there's CodeBlock. It's something that's not out yet, but it's coming soon. Um, that will allow you to run server-side JavaScript to extend the capability of the platform for more complex automations. I imagine that's going to be how you're going to do more of your heavy-duty parsing if you've got like a, you know, that JSON object and you need to parse data out of it easy, um, I imagine that's kind of what you would use. Um, so while FileMaker and Claris Connect are indeed two separate products, together they offer a complete platform to enable powerful digital transformation. Uh, with Claris Connect, anyone can achieve integration and automation in minutes rather than days. It is simple and accessible for everyone, but also offers robust and powerful capability for professional developers. Additionally, there are no boundaries with Connect as you have the freedom to connect both cloud and on-premise applications. FileMaker and Claris Connect work together. Working together is truly a powerful combination for workplace innovation. Um, so how do you purchase Claris Connect? There, there are two different purchasing options. Um, there's Essentials and Standard. Claris Connect Essentials is $99 per month. It includes three active flows. Uh, you can have as many inactive flows as you want. Um, and this includes 10,000 API calls per month. Uh, an API call almost equates one-to-one -to, -one to each step in a flow. In some cases, a step might require more than one API call, but uh, typically it's going to be one call per a given flow, or one call per step per given flow. Um, Claris Connect standard is $249 per month. and includes six active flows and 50,000 API calls per month. Um, depending on your plan and specific requirements, you can choose the best way to start with Claris Connect based on what you need. Um, expansion packs are available for adding API calls and active flows. Uh, to learn more about Claris Connect, you can visit claris.com. There is a trial available, so you can try it out. Uh, the trial is good for 15 days, includes three flows, three unique apps, and 10,000 API calls, so uh, identical to the essentials. Um, a credit card is required to sign up, um, but I don't believe they auto charge your account when it expires. At least that's what their email said. Um, so, yeah, that is Claris Connect.